What is ABI? It stands for acquired brain injury, and it's the sort of thing that can happen suddenly from a fall or uh, maybe a, an illness. So we're going to get more details on that and why we need to know more and how we can raise money so that we can help people who've been affected. We have got uh, a member of the BIST, which is the Brain Injury Society of Toronto, and also the Ontario Brain Injury Association, Fabio Longo here, and Ruth Fernandez, who is a committee member of Mix and Mingle. Good morning, Val. Thanks super for fun me. event. Okay, it, did I explain that right, ABI? You did. Essentially, um, it's, it, it's an incident that causes damage to the brain. Um, acquired brain injury is something that affects so many Ontario uh, people. Over half a million people are dealing with it. Uh, it affects probably about 18,000 people a year. A year? A year, and it's very, very common. And it's, it could happen as a result of a concussion, a sporting event. Um, it could happen as a result of a motor vehicle accident, a slip and fall, uh, an assault, anything like that. And there's some specific medical instances that, like stroke or aneurysm that could also cause brain injury. So it affects so many people. And uh, the OBA, OBIA, is, it, the Ontario Brain Injury Association, is essentially a grassroots organization that provides uh, awareness, support, um, provides a lot of education, uh, even for family members. What about symptoms? Because it's not like having a broken arm. People see the cast, they go, oh, you have a broken arm, and they know to treat you differently or to help you with certain things or, or to expect that you might be in pain. Brain injury, we don't see it on the outside. So what are some of the symptoms that we should be aware of? Well, it, you're right. It's, it's, it's an invisible injury for many people. Some people have traumatic brain injuries. It's visible and they deal with it. Some people have a concussion and they're not even aware of themselves that they have a brain injury. And, uh, you know, they could have nausea, uh, feeling like they have to throw up or throw up after the incident itself. But then there are a number of other issues that are more subtle. Uh, difficulties, concentrating, slower readings, speech issues. It's very common if people have speech issues mm -hmm. following a, a, an incident like this. Um, they may have continued headaches, uh, issues sleeping, nightmares. Uh. What about personality changes? Does that happen too? Absolutely. Oh, yeah? I mean, their mood will be off, and I think people who don't know that have ABI won't, uh, you know, they don't know that, uh, you know, something's changed. Maybe their partner will start to pick up on it a few months later or sometimes a few years later, but it's not always visible. So it's not necessarily going to go away quickly. It needs treatment. Absolutely. I mean, many people don't know they have it, so we encourage them to look at the BIST website. It goes through a list of symptoms, identify it get to a doctor, get some assistance. Uh, absolutely, there's a ton of treatment out there. In the first two years, you see quite a bit of improvement if you can address the issue early. Um, so it's, there is treatment out there for people who suffer the injuries. Fantastic. I think, however, it's important to note that there is no cure. And um, I mean, we notice that if there's an acute or um, chronically concussed brain, there are treatments out there, but there isn't a cure. And this is why we're fundraising so much so that, you know, the wonderful doctors and scientists in Toronto, like uh, Dr. Andrew Baker and Dr. Charles Tatter, who dedicate their life to research, can find a cure for yeah. ABI. We saw, we all watched as Sidney Crosby spent months and months and months uh, getting over the effects of his concussion. He has access to an amazing team of right. specialists. Yep. Imagine the everyday person who's trying to get by. So to know that uh, we have these associations available with the information, with the treatment options is so important. And with important. programs. And with programs. So you've got a fabulous uh, event coming up. It is the ninth annual Mix and Mingle. Yes, Tell me about it. Yes, we are very excited. It's happening next Wednesday, June 12th. And for the second year, we are hosting the event at the Steam Whistle. It's a great venue. Um, it's very bright. We fit over 500 people in the, in the venue. And, um, you know, we come together to network, to exchange ideas on ABI, and, uh, you know, to give people hope that, um, you know, more programs are going to be started and, you know, perhaps a cure. And it's so frustrating for people. They, this, these usually happen very suddenly. There's no warning. You just, one day you have an acquired brain injury and it's like, well, now what, right? So uh, this is an event that's, that's supposed to be a lot of fun and raise awareness. Is there anything else you hope to uh, get out of this event? We definitely, we want to raise funds so that uh, Obaya and BIS can continue to do the work that they do. Um, the funds, like we talked about, they, uh, you know, they go towards programs. Also, Obaya produces a biannual conference every, um, every two years in Niagara Falls. 
and you know they bring together scientists as well as ABI survivors so that they can talk about these issues and find you know better treatments. So people can really brainstorm and, and uh, talk about all of this together. Oysters seem to have a prominent uh, place in this event. Why That's the oyster? Right. Well, they're a symbol for, for the brain Is because right? it's so delicate and it's uh, very similar in texture. And uh, I know that a few other organizations have uh, used the oyster as a symbol, and so we continue to honor that. Great. I hadn't thought of that. So the texture is actually similar to that of a human brain. It's very sensitive, yeah. Wow. Okay, well now I can't eat an oyster oh. if I'm thinking <laughs> about brains. Uh, you're going to have some big names in attendance too, yeah? Well, we've invited some of the scientific community, um, like Dr. Chatter, uh, Dr. Charles Tatter, who works at uh, Toronto Western Hospital, Dr. Kieran Murphy, so hopefully they will join us and, uh, you know, brainstorm together. Right on. Thank you both so much for raising awareness uh, and getting this event going next Wednesday, June 12th at the Steam Whistle Brewery. And, of course, all the information is available on the websites, right? B-I-S-T dot C-A and also O-B-I-A dot C-A. Thank you.